بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اليوم يئس الذين كفروا من دينكم فلا تخشوهم واخشون اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم مصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وآله أجمعين وأصحابه المنتجبين أما بعد قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم يا يحيى خذ الكتاب بقوة وآتيناه الحكم صبيا In the name of Allah the most beneficent the most merciful Respectable audience, distinguished listeners, honorable viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. By the grace and mercy of Almighty Allah, today, God willing, we are going to talk about the birth and imamat of the Shi'it 12th Imam, Imam Zaman, Ajjalullah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. But prior to touching this important and crucial topic, let me have a very brief revision of what we have said in the previous lecture, plus a complimentary point about Imam Jawad salam's Imam. We talked about some Shi'it denominations. We talked about some other sects within the Shi'ats. We believed and we talked about this important topic that the rest of the denominations, save the 12 Shi'ats, they are not following the two path. In some respect, they have deviated from the righteous path our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his household has drawn for all the Muslims. So we nominated or we counted some four important sects, some four important ramifications or denominations that were found within the Shi'ism. For example, we talked about Zaydis, Ismailis, Fatahis, and those Waqifis. We talked about the historical background that they have emerged within the Shi'ats. And we say that their concept of Imam, that they have either stopped uh, in Imam Sadiq or, the, or in Imam Kadhim salam, or they have drilled from the righteous path choosing Ismail, the grandson of Imam Sadiq salam, as their Imam. We talked about those historical backgrounds where they have created such sects. So we talked about this important issue that their views and their opinion in respect with imamat, in respect with the leadership, does not seem to be true. For their views run counter to what our Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in his household has said, particularly with those tradition which talk about the 12, the 12 caliphs that would emerge after the demise of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his household. The complementary point that I have just promised to you, dear listeners, that is about Imam Jawad, alayhi salam's imamah. 
you know that after the demise or martyrdom of Imam Rida alayhi salam in 203rd of Hijri, I mean Islamic calendar, so Imam Rida alayhi salam when she when Imam Rida alayhi salam martyred, martyred. So after the martyrdom of Imam Rida alayhi salam in this particular year, so Imam Jawad alayhi salam was at his eight. So Imam Jawad alayhi salam had eight years. So the question at that time arose amongst all the Shiites, particularly amongst the scholars, that how is it possible that an immature child, such as having eight years old, should lead the Muslim? Or can he have this eligibility or ability to lead the Muslim and particularly the Shiites or not? Another one should be replaced. So this, we can say immaturity, apparently immaturity of Imam Jawad salam, during the martyrdom of his father, it created a challenge for all the Shiites. And the Shiites were bewildered or the Shiites were perplexed whether or not to follow him because he was a child. So due to this, many questions arose at that time and still there are some problems raised by some of the anti-Shiites. We can say people and sects that they believe that how is it possible that a person should follow a child? He has not received, he is not mature enough. So how is it possible that he has to be followed and his words and works must be imitated? and must be emulated by others. So this question was there at that time and still it exists. But according to the Shiites who are of the view that Imamat is not a matter of election, Imamat is not a matter that the people's vote must be decisive in that, since they believe that Imamat and Imams have been predefined and predetermined by Almighty Allah and it was proclaimed and declared through the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him in his household. So there is no problem because not only we have historically talking, we have some exceptional cases in this respect, but also in prophethood we have such cases. For example, this verse of the Holy Quran that I have recited for you, dear listeners, at the beginning, Almighty Allah says and addresses to John, Ya Yahya, khudil kitab bi wa aataynahu al hukma sabiya. So, this word or this verse of the Holy Quran explicitly says that, O oh John, you have been given the word of Almighty Allah. You have just received Almighty Allah's revelation while you are a child. So when Almighty Allah wills, then there is no matter, there is no room left for one's age. Age is not that much important. There are exceptional cases, and Imam Jawad salam, is one of those. And later on, all the Shiites scholars came and wanted to examine him whether or not he has this eligibility. But after the examination, all of them completely and utterly say that indeed you are our Imam. Because all the answers were logical, all the answers he gave for the people who asked him various questions, all of them were facing with stunning and remarkable answers from Imam Jawad alayhi salam side. So another case that can be brought historically talking that approves our claim that if Almighty Allah wills, then there is no room left for age, that is the Prophet Christ, the Mary the Virgin, when she delivered this child, so indeed all the people at that time accused her of some bad actions. But Almighty Allah said that no, you should not accuse her of these actions. She is pious, she is virgin, 
She must be respected. I mean the Mary. La ilaha illa huwa al-malikul quddusus salam al-mu'minul mu'ayminul azizul jabbarul mutakabbiru subhanallah So at that time, Mary pointed at her son, the Christ Jesus. Then they said, How is it possible that we have to talk with whom he is still in the cradle? He is, is still a child. How is it possible? Because usually the people face with children that they will start talking after their second year. But how is it possible that one has to talk with a child that he is, yeah, he is just born, he has just been born? But again, this is exceptional case. This is what Almighty Allah has willed. And then the Jesus, the Christ, the Jesus Christ is start talking, saying that indeed, inni Abdullah atani al-kitab wa ja'alani nabiya. So, all these phrases have been said by the very child who was still in the cradle. So it means all these examples are brought forward so that we should not say that, okay, is it, it is impossible that a person should lead the Muslim during his childhood or when he is at the age of eight. It is not impossible, rather it is possible because if Almighty Allah wills, as it was repeatedly said, there is no room left for one's age. There are people with 70 years old, but still they have nothing to say for the people. But there are children, there are genius, there are exceptional cases that yes, at the age of their childhood, they have many say, they have many words for the people. And then the lifestyle or the the life of our Imam, I mean Imam Jawad salam, proved this true. That Imam Jawad salam led the Muslim, led the Shi'ats, the manner they deserved. So it is very much important to be kept it in mind that the age issue is not a problematic issue when there is the will of Almighty Allah. When Almighty Allah will that Imam Jawad has to lead the Muslim or lead the Shi'ats during his eight years old, then indeed these questions are not very much challenging. Because not only there are historical cases, not only the Imams, even the Prophets were designated to their prophetic mission during their childhood. It is not a matter that we should ignore or we should refute or we should disagree and refuse to accept it. So Imam Jawad Salam's Imamat is very much similar to this. So respectable audience and distinguished listeners, the topic that we have chosen for today's session, for today's episode, that is Imam Mahdi Salam's birth. You know that there are some challenging questions about the 12 Imams of the Shi'ats. For example, about his birth, about the lengthy lifespan he had, about, and still he has, and about the way he was born, whether or not he is born, or about his occultation about the minor and the major occultations we have and the Shi'ats have experienced. So there are these sorts of questions about Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. So prior to that, let me tell you this hadith as a prelude that our Holy Prophet Muhammad peace upon him in his house says, 
that from my descendants there will emerge a person that he will fill the world with justice and he will eliminate all the oppressions and all the oppressors. Having this tradition in mind or given this particular tradition of the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him in his household, the Abbasids were always curious to find such a person and kill him. And due to this, the birth of Imam Zaman, the, the Shi'ites' twelfth Imam, is very much similar to the birth of Moses. I mean Musa alayhi salam. And there is also a tradition that has been received by us that is a tradition produced by one of our infallible imam who says that indeed such circumstance that was, prev that was prevailing over there during the birth of Musa alayhi salam that has prevailed or that will prevail over there when Imam Mahdi salam, is going to be born. So due to this, the Abbasid Khalis were in search of all the pregnant women, that such a man who would threaten their, we can say, kingdom, their power, should be killed, the same as Musa in Fara'u. You know that the people predicted and there were some who had this profession of prediction during Frau. And they said, we predict that a man would emerge that would threaten, that would jeopardize your kingdom. And then Frau started killing the pregnant woman and searching and trying to find out the person, particularly the male gender, in order not his kingdom be threatened and jeopardized by this man. So the same case is very much similar to Imam Mahdi alayhi birth. But the examples differ. There was Fra'u, but here is the Abbasid Caliphs. There was Musa alayhi salam, and here is Imam Mahdi ajalallah ta'ala farajahu sharif. So, respectable audience and distinguished listeners, but Imam Mahdi salam's birth was in a hidden form. So, right now, the question might arise that if Imam Mahdi salam's birth was not known by all, so how is it possible that we should believe in his birth? So, this question has been asked by many. The response is this, that there are various amounts of evidence that imply and that endorse the birth of Imam Mahdi salam. So, as it was said that there are similarities between Musa's salam birth and Imam Mahdi salam due to the socio-political condition that was prevailing over there by the enemies, so Imam Mahdi salam's birth was not known for all due to the threats, due to the menaces that was jeopardizing his existence. So during his martyrdom, I mean his father's martyrdom, Imam Zaman salam had five years old. So again, the same question that was asked that how is it possible that a child with age of five should lead a community? The same question might be asked about the imamat of Imam Mahdi salam. Again, the response we gave for Imam Jawad salam's imamah 
The same can be applied, the same can be held true for Imam Zaman salam. There is no place that we should say that it is too strange that a child should lead. No, there were prophets who were a child, but again they knew things that the old people did not know. So since imamat is the continuation of prophethood, we are of the view that the issue of age is not that much extraordinary. Yes, for usual cases and usual cases that might be, but there are exceptional cases that can be proved in the history. What are those evidence which verify the birth of Imam Zaman alayhi one of the disagreements the Shiites and the Sunnites have with one another that is about the birth of the Savior, the birth of Munji, the birth of Mahdi. Because there are a great deal of traditions and narratives in their books and also in the Shiites book that connote and that imply that there will emerge a savior, that a savior will emerge and will fill the world with justice. These are slight differences amongst the Shiites and the Sunnites, some of the Sunnites. They say that Imam Mahdi has not been born yet. Imam Mahdi is not born yet. But we are of the view that yes, there are evidence that explicitly show that Imam Mahdi salam, is born. The first evidence is that the explicit words of Imam Hassan Askari, salam, his father, he was asked, do you have son? He said, yes, I have. So since Imam Hassan Askari salam, is also believed to be infallible, he does not tell lie. And he said that, yes, I have this son. I have a male son. Yes, he was not very much willing to say and to tell about the whereabouts of his son, for he was threatened. He was to be killed by the Abbasid Caliphs. So the explicit words of Imam Hassan Askari salam stain that Imam Mahdi salam was born in 255 of Islamic calendar. The second reason, that is, that the nurse who helped Imam Mahdi salam's mother during the delivery, she also had this confession. So her word is also staining on the birth of Imam Mahdi salam. Her word has been recorded in the historical books. The third evidence is that there was a celebration, there was a party held by Imam Ali Salam for this to commemorate and to celebrate this event. So it was a matter, it was a very decisive issue for the Shiites that our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his household has predicted that there will be 12 caliphs. So 11 of them have been appeared. Where is the 12th? So all of the people, particularly the Shiites, were anxiously waiting for the emergence of the 12th caliph. So when he was born, Imam Hassan Askari salam, celebrated his birth and gave aqiqa. So, dear listeners, all these evidence imply that Imam Mahdi salam, was born. Another evidence is that the people, after the demise of Imam Hassan Askari salam, had connection with Imam Zaman salam. The people had connection, the people had contacts with Imam Mahdi salam, during minor occultation. After the demise of Imam Hassan Askari salam, there were some four representatives known as Imam's representatives. We call it Nawab Arba. So the people had contacts with Imam through these figures. And they also said that yes, Imam exists.
And even some of the people's demands were answered. Some of them had this very, we can say, longing desires that Almighty Allah, you may bless us a child. So then they transmitted this longing and this wish of the Shi'ats to Imam Ali Salam, and then Imam Ali Salam prayed, and then Almighty Allah has given them children. Collecting all these evidence bring us to this conclusion that Imam Salam was birthed, Imam was alive. Though all the people did not have access to Imam Salam due to all those prevailing threats. But his disappearance or his lack of direct contact with the people does not necessarily mean that he did not exist. He did exist, and he had limited contacts with the people. And through these four representatives, he solved many challenges and many problems that she had faced with. Another important evidence, that is the prediction made by Imam Zaman salam about his fourth representative, which is the beginning of major occultation. When Imam salam said to him that you will die at this day and you have to tell it for the Shi'ats that after my demise there will be no representative through whom you could connect with Imam salam. And this was the beginning of major occultation. And indeed that prediction came true. And the man died at the very age, at the very moment that was predicted by Imam Ali Salam. The way the Abbasid Caliphs were searching here and there, asking about the whereabouts of Imam, it shows that Imam Ali Salam was present. Imam Ali Salam was born. Otherwise, there was no need of this search. So, respectable audience and distinguished listeners, this was the evidence we put forth for the birth of Imam Zaman alayhi salam. Next week, inshallah, by the grace and mercy of Almighty Allah, we will be talking about Imam Zaman alayhi salam's imam. How is it possible? And what is the major difference between the Shi'ats and the Sunnite point of view about Imam Mahdi alayhi salam's imam? May God bless us all a happy life in this world and a happier life in the next. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma anfa'na bil'ilm wa zayyinna bil'hilm wa jammilna bil'afiyah وكرمنا بالتقوى إن ولي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين